my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel Homemade Mathematics. Today we are going to be looking at if a social distancing classroom is even possible mathematically. I've been seeing this little infograph going around, I'll put it up on the screen here, um, but it says the CDC's draft guidance on reopening schools, spacing desks six feet apart, refraining, refraining from field trips and school assemblies, and eating lunch in classrooms instead of the cafeteria. So I just wanted to kind of take a brief look at this and see, is this even possible? What would it look like? Um, and all those types of things. More specifically, what we're gonna be looking at is one, how this classroom would look. So how would we have to set it up? We're gonna take a look at the average size classroom and see if that would work or what our classroom would have to look like to make that work. And then lastly, I think all my teachers will be a big fan of this. We're going to look at how many more teachers we would actually need to hire um, to make this possible, the social distancing classrooms possible. So whenever I see a word problem or something that I'm turning into a word problem like this infograph, I always start with a picture. So start, to start off, I thought about, okay, well, here's our door. Let's say my door is right here. That's the corner of our classroom, okay? I know our desks have to be six feet apart. So I know this is going to have to be six feet and this is going to have to be six feet. And then wherever that is, that is where my desk is going to have, my first desk is going to have to be. Because someone's going to have to be able to walk into the room and walk along this and not be within six feet of that person at that desk. All right, so I approximated and I said each desk is about two foot by two foot. Just, and there is my first desk. Right? But then my next desk is going to have to be another six feet from the edge of that desk. All right, and I'm going to continue to do that this way. I could continue to do this this way as well. Right, And I could continue that process until I had enough for however many students I needed. And I could just add up the length, add up the width, and multiply them to get the total area, the square footage of this We'll just say rectangular sized classroom. We could do that, but that would take a lot of time. All right, so for um, my first example, I just started with an average size classroom from when I was a teacher, which was about 30 kids. All right, so I would have to continue this until I had 30 desks, which is gonna take a lot more time than I want to take when I know a quicker method. If I can figure out how about how much space, remember this is just an approximate because this, I don't have any room for the teacher included in this. So this is a bare minimum amount of square footage that would be needed um, because there would probably also have to be a border around the whole classroom for the teacher to be able to circulate as well. So this is even just a minimum square footage needed. But if I know how much for, got a little off track, if I know how much for one student, then I can figure out how much for however many students. All right, so. So you can see that's approximately the space it's going to take for each student, right? You could go around and if you drew this all out, you could do that for every student and figure out their space. But they all should be equally spaced, so they all should have the, equal, uh, the same amount or equal amount of square footage. Which, this is a lot easier to find the square footage than creating all of them and finding the total, right? Because now I just know... We have a six feet for the distance and then the two feet for the desk. So this is eight foot by same thing over here, eight foot. So each student is taking up approximately 64 square feet. And remember that's, that's even on the smaller estimate end because we are gonna need the space for the teacher um, and other materials in the room as well. So I feel like I'm saying this a lot, but this is a bare minimum amount of square footage needed, right? You, this is as low as it would go. We'd probably need more than this, but this is just kind of a low end estimate. So one question I thought of that I thought some people might have is, well, does it matter how I set it up? Like what if instead, like what if I make it a square? What if I make it a rectangle? What if I make it a thick rectangle versus a skinnier rectangle? All of those things. So I just did a quick example with my 30 students. Um, there's two different rectangles I can think of that would work out evenly, right? Which would be having desks that are five by six, right? So five across, six down, or six across, five down, either way. 
And then what if we had like a long and skinny one that was 10 by three? Is that gonna change my square footage? Which we know each desk is eight feet long. So if we took our five times eight, we get 40. And then again, we have six this way, which are also eight. So six times eight would get us 42, which total would get us 1,920 square feet. And I could do the same thing here, except for this time I have 10 across, and again, they're eight feet each, so 80, and then three across times eight is going to be 24, right? If you notice, this doubled, this got cut in half. We're gonna get the same thing. No matter what, all right, if I use this strategy as well, I took my 64 square feet per student times my 30 students, I'm also going to get that 1,920, all right? So it doesn't really matter how I set this up, which approach I take. Um, if I have 30 students, I'm gonna need a minimum of 1,920 square feet. Okay, which I don't know about you, but that would be a pretty big classroom. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say I have, you know, an average sized house, three bedrooms, um, two bathrooms, and that's bigger than my square footage of my house. And that would be one classroom. All right, so that's pretty big. That's kind of given us a hint that this strategy, I don't know, I'm not sure about it. So it doesn't really matter how we set it up. What it depends on, what it's dependent on, is how many students there are, right? Because no matter what, each student's gonna take up minimum 64 square feet. So what it really depends on is how many we're taking that times, right? Am I taking it times 10 because I have 10 students or am I taking it times 30 because I have 30 students? That's gonna make a big difference. I just wanted to look at our other example to show how that really does affect it. If I would have 15 students in, instead, right? What do we expect is gonna happen to this number? If I go from 30 students to 15, right? Our students got cut in half, so our square footage got cut in half to 960 square feet as well. So since we know it depends on students, the next thing I started to think about is, okay, well, how big is an average size classroom? And if I know each student is gonna minimum take up 64 square feet, about how many kids with the social distancing protocol could I fit in an average size classroom? So I had to look up a couple of rough numbers. Again, these are estimates that I found on Google. Um, so give or take a little bit here. But I found that the average square foot of a classroom is 900 square feet. I'm going to go ahead and erase this because it's getting distracting and we're on to the next question. Okay, much better. I looked it up. Average size classroom is 900 square feet. All right, if you remember from that picture I drew, we said the minimum amount each student's going to take up is at least the 64 square feet. So if I know I have 900 total and I'm taking um, 64 square feet per kid to figure out how many kids Right, we could take our, we could test it, right? We could take one times 64, two times 64, three times 64, um, until we get right under 900 and not over. You might notice that 15 is 960, so maybe you try 12 and 13. Um, but the easiest strategy would to be just to take the amount of square foot we have divided by the amount of square feet it takes per kid. I got like 14.0 something, so obviously we can't have like part of a student, so we would just round that to 14 students. With the average size classroom, we'd be able to fit about 14 students in there with those social distancing protocol, which I don't know about you, but that would be really nice to have 14 kids in a class. I know when I taught at a smaller school, I did have that, and it was amazing. Um, only problem with that is the... Um, smaller we make our ratio of teachers to students, the more teachers we're going to need, right? If before um, it was every teacher had 24 students and now every teacher has 12 students, 
they're gonna need double the amount of teachers they originally did. That's what I wanna take a look at next is, would this even be possible with teachers? Would we be able to supply the amount of teachers we need for this size classroom? Remember earlier I talked about this is like minimum square footage and we would still need room for the teacher to walk around. So what I did instead of 14 students is I said it was actually 12 students. So I took up the space of two students for my teacher just to give some extra space to be able to walk around, if that makes sense. All right, that's just an approximate. I looked up, again, this was on Google, so rough estimate, but I looked up, on average, our teacher to student ratio is for one teacher, they have 16 students. Um, and I did this, all of these stats that I looked up were for high schools in the United States just to keep everything similar. So this is only looking at the high school population. So that's also something to keep in mind. There's also elementary teachers and middle school teachers that we would need as well. So on average, I mean, that's a pretty good teacher to student ratio if you ask me. One teacher is 16 students. We said with our social distancing size, you know, that, that teacher's not gonna be able to take more than 12. The maximum they can take is one teacher on average, because again, some classrooms are gonna be bigger, some are gonna be smaller though. So that means some classes might only be eight or nine kids. Um, but we have our new ratio of one teacher to 12 students. So there are a lot of ways you could go about trying to figure out how many more teachers we would need. So I'm just gonna take you through the way I thought about this. I then looked up the average high school student size currently to figure out about how many teachers per high school I have. Remember, I looked up all these stats for high school um, and their averages for the whole United States. So when I looked that up, I found that the average school has 752 students, the average high school in the United States. So 750 students. I know for every 16 students, there's gonna be one teacher. So you might see I'm setting up a proportion here because we want to make our relationship proportional, right? If I have 16 students, it's one teacher. If I have 750 students, 752 students, how many teachers would I have to have to be that equivalent um, one to 16 ratio? So you could set up your proportion here, however you decide to do this, or you might've just recognized that we're gonna take our 752 divided by 16. Um, so cross multiply and divide which 752 divided by 16 got me 47. So on average, what that number is telling me, on average, I have about 47 teachers per high school. So if instead I took my 752 and instead of dividing it by 16, if I divided it by 12 for my new social distancing ratio, I got 63. I'm going to need quite a few more teachers. I can take that 63 minus 47 to see that I'm going to need 16 new high school teachers per high school. Okay, remember this is just for one average sized high school. One high school with 752 students in it, which I know some high schools with 752 students in one grade, right? So again, this is an average, all right? But this is just for one high school, right? I looked up approximately how many high schools are there in the US, and since they're averaging these all together, this number should be somewhat accurate, which there were 24,000, yes, 24,000 high schools in the US approximately. So if I know each high school needs 16 new teachers, I need to take that 24,000 schools times 16, which I ended up with 384,000 more high school teachers. Okay, this is assuming we were able to build these schools and all of that, but you can see how ridiculous that is. 384,000 
more teachers just for high school, right? That's one out of, you know, usually three schools, right? Elementary, middle school, high school, right? That's four grades out of the 12 grades we have. That's a third of our teachers. So really we'd have to take that number times three to figure out the total amount of teachers we would need in the United States to make this work. So the last thing I wanted to look at is how many new teachers we're getting a year to see how long it would actually take us to be able to get the amount of teachers we needed. And that is assuming not a single teacher quits, not a single teacher retires, they're all still there and we're just adding new teachers every year. And at the same pace we were adding them before all of the quarantine. All right, so I'm again gonna erase this. Great, so this next information I got from the school workforce census, um, which does show the amount of teachers the United States is producing per year is going down gradually. All right, in 2015, we were producing about 45,000 new teachers into the workforce, where in 2017, it went down to 43,830. Um, I do not know for sure, but I would suspect those numbers have continued to go down. I could be wrong on that, um, but we're going to just use this approximate estimate for 2017 here. So we said we would need 384,000 more high school teachers. So if I took that divided by the number of teachers we're getting per year, we're gonna find that it would take us 8.76 years to be able to get the amount of new teachers we needed. It's gonna take us almost nine years to get those additional teachers we need in there. And remember, that's assuming that no one quits, no one retires, right? All those teachers that are there stay there and we continue to add this amount every year. Another thing that alters these numbers here is this, these numbers here, this was 43,830 new teachers kindergarten through 12th grade. So knowing that only maybe a third of those are really gonna be our high school teachers. So if it's a third of that, that means we actually need to take this number times three. So I'm not going to do the math on that, but it's going to take us a long time. So as you can see, yes, the physical challenges of it make it impossible, but also the challenge of providing the amount of teachers per size, classroom size, it would be pretty tough to make it work. What do you think we're going to do? Comment down below a solution you've thought of. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. I'm trying to come out with two to three videos a week, so to make sure you don't miss one of those, please subscribe, and thank you for watching.